Sometimes this reality and this unreality confront each other. And then we are faced by a contrast which is incomprehensible. Look, I open a copy of the Sunday Times color magazine. Aramis is an attitude. It is not merely proposing a new shaving soap. It is proposing, as it says, an attitude, a life, a civilization. The highest value of this civilization is the individual ego. Pims tastes every bit as good as it looks and is easy to drink, which is sometimes hard for us to live with, because we wouldn't want people to think the chords it strikes are all meek and mild-mannered. So, when you're through with your first half pint of Pims, stand back and see how you look, and face the hard truth. That song may have ended, but the melody is lingering on. I turn the page. These are photographs of refugees from East Pakistan fled to West Bengal. The text which accompanies the photographs says that these refugees deserve more help than any others in the world. The writer appeals to the public conscience. But if I turn the page again, the inadequacy of such appeals becomes obvious. The words and pictures on these pages all appear to be real and all belong to the same language. The text the photographs taken in Pakistan, the photographs taken for the publicity, the editing of the paper, the layout, the printing, all are elements of the same culture, our culture. Yet between each page there is such a fissure, such a disconnection, such incoherence, that one can only say this culture is mad. On pages like these, reality itself becomes unrecognizable. It is difficult in this clamour to explain why one set of victims deserves more attention and more help than any others. There have been so many refugees in recent years. Aperitifs can be a bit sweet for today's taste, so a lot of people go to the other extreme and serve dry drinks that taste of nothing. What do words mean when juxtaposed like this? What happens in East Pakistan, or for that matter Birmingham, any historic event anywhere is always on the far side of the frontier of the publicity dream. What happens out there happens to strangers whose fate is meant to be different from ours. What happens in the dream is meant to happen to us. Things happen after a bad diaspora. There is no communication between the two worlds. Their contrast is beyond understanding, unless one takes a world political view. Yet what is really the connection between these publicity images and our own lives, between their promises and our own needs? Why eventually are these publicity images so bleak?
what surrounds these posters. Oil paintings were surrounded by gold frames which symbolized the wealth of the owner within the picture and around it. What surrounds the publicity image is us as we are. Our cities are papered with pictures of what we might buy, papered with dreams which invite us to enter them. But they exclude us as we now are. Behind the paper are hidden our needs. This series began by considering the tradition of the European oil painting. It has ended by us looking at publicity images today. Because I believe that in many respects, these images continue that tradition. I have been critical of many things in that tradition, of our culture, of some of the values which it celebrates. And I've illustrated my arguments by using the modern means of reproduction. But finally, what I've shown and what I have said, like everything else that is shown or said through these means of reproduction, must be judged against your own experience. Thank you.